It's time to find out who the Seattle Seahawks really are. They're about to play the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati on the road. And we're going to figure out if this team is legit or not. Now, the Seahawks are coming off a bye week, thankfully. They had a lot of injuries. They look like they could be tracking to get back Charles Cross, their left tackle. They can have a healthy Geno Smith who banged up his knee against the Giants and actually missed a couple minutes of the game where Drew Locke had to come in, but he will also be healthy. He got a week off. Jamal Adams, who unfortunately got hurt again or nicked up, so to say. He got a concussion early in the first quarter against the Giants, got a week off, and now he's able to be able to come back and play. You have to remember the Seahawks had games missed by both Devin Witherspoon and Tariq Woolen earlier in the season. Now both of them have had a week off and they can get healthy. So overall, this entire situation was great for the Seattle Seahawks having an early bye week, despite most people thinking a week five bye week would kind of suck in most scenarios. And it usually would. It usually be way too early in the season. And For the Seahawks, it was the opposite. They were so banged up early in the season and they had a lot going on where a week five bye week actually ended up working out in their favor. Now, with everyone getting healthy, getting a bye week, having a coach like Pete Carroll after a bye week, which is also helpful, it's time to see who the Seahawks really are. Now, obviously, they had a loss that was bad to the Rams in week one. But after week one, they've had wins against the Panthers and the Giants, which most people are not that impressed with. They were good wins. The defense looked good. A lot of good plays happened. A lot of big things happened, but they're not that impressive. But they also got a win in Detroit on the road against a really good Lions team whose only loss is to the Seattle Seahawks. That was one of those games where they were proving what kind of football team they are. And I think this is the type of game that we're looking at again against the Bengals. We're trying to find out who are the Seattle Seahawks, right? Because... You know, you have that great win against the Lions, but you have a bad loss against the Rams. And then you have two games against bad football teams and the Panthers and Giants. So here's another opportunity to prove that you're a really good football team or prove how good you actually can be. And I'm really excited to see what happens. You already have trash talk starting, which is another part of it that's pretty exciting and funny. Some people hate it. Some people love it. I'm one of those people that if you end up winning, it turns out that it was actually fun and funny that they were trash talking each other if you end up losing it does end up kind of sucking right but dk metcalf came out and said that he tips his hat off to jamar chase and that he's a great wide receiver but he thinks that spoon is going to take care of him aka devin witherspoon now jamar chase obviously didn't love that statement right jamar chase uh and i can't tell if he was being serious or if he was kind of going along with understanding that DK Metcalf also said, great receiver, tip of the hat to him, but said Spoon's going to take care of him or give him trouble. I don't know if Jamar Chase took that personally or was kind of joking back when he was asked about those comments because he came out and he was like, well, they have two corners. One's taller, one's shorter, one's faster, one's more smooth, one's more aggressive, one more handsy. And then at the end he goes, you know, they're pretty decent. They're not horrible. And not horrible with a smirk on his face can come off as two ways could come off as extremely disrespectful. If you're being dead serious saying Witherspoon and Woolen are not horrible when they're not terrible, whatever the quote was. What did you see from Woolen and from Witherspoon on film? They're, they're top cornerbacks. Yeah. They're, um, one's shorter, one's taller, one's more handsy. Um, one's not as more handsy. Um, they, pl- they both play different roles in it. Um, one's super fast. One's just like smooth. Um, but, you know, they're both decent corners. You know, they're, they're not horrible. The defense is good. So, you know, got to get props. When they're two of the better young corners in the league, two of the best three or four young corners in the league, and soon going to be, you know, two of the top ten corners in the entire NFL. Or he was just being playful back the way DK Metcalf was. But this is what makes these type of games fun. You have great talents and stars all around, already talking, already talking getting this game to a point where it's becoming a hyped up game and it's one of the better games of the weekend. Now the Bengals at two and three does not look like a crazy team on paper, but you, you know, if you know how the Bengals are in Joe Burrow's time, the Bengals are six and seven in September. I believe the stat was, 
and then they go on a run. And being 6-7 and seven in September means there are a lot of times they've came out of September with losing records. And this is a team that went to back-to-back AFC championships, went to a Super Bowl two years ago, all while having bad records in September. So it's very common they have bad record in September. It's common that they start off the year slower, but then they start to kick it up. And you saw it last week. Yeah, they had a close first half with the Cardinals, but then Jamar Chase ended up with almost 200 yards and three touchdowns, and they blew out the Cardinals. They blew them out of the water. So I think the team that we expect the Bengals to be is back officially, and this is why it's going to be a big test for the Seahawks. The Seahawks defense, as I've mentioned, with Witherspoon, and Woolen, and Bobby Wagner, who just, you know, he's fourth out of 81 qualified linebackers in PFF rankings, really having a stellar year. He's not been good in coverage, but overall, he's had a phenomenal year at the linebacker position. Diggs and Love have been good at safety. Woolen and Witherspoon are phenomenal corners. The defensive line last week, not just the line, everybody involved, but last week, 11 sacks for the Seahawks, one of four teams, four, to do that, I think, since the 80s or the 90s, was it? And one of three teams since the 80s to have four-plus players with two sacks or more in a single game. So the defense is figuring it out, right? They're getting better. And you can give me all this this hoobla about it was against the Panthers and the Lions and the uh, Giants. Okay, they're NFL teams. And there's other teams that played teams like the Panthers and the Giants. And when I said the Lions, the I, I, the Lions scored a lot on us, so that's why I kind of just let it slide. But the Giants and the Panthers, you know other teams play them, right? The San Francisco 49ers, who I regretfully say are fucking good. They're extremely good at football, and they're, they scare me as a Seahawks fan because they are that good this year. They play other teams. They're not getting 11 sacks. They play bad teams too sometimes. So... You can't just say, oh, it's the Giants. No, the Seahawks defense, whatever they figured out against the Giants was impressive. It's an NFL team, and they ended up with 11 sacks. They ended up with Devin Witherspoon having a 97-yard pick six. They were doing things the right way. You have a lot of players on the Seahawks team that are coming into form. Like, you know, Uchenna Nawasu, Nawosu, actually, Nawosu. I've been told in the comments I've been saying it wrong. Uchenna Nawosu looks better. Boye Mafe looks great. Jordan Brooks has been getting better. Bobby Wagner is great. Everybody on this defense is looking good. Um, it's not where you want it to be. You know, I would love to have said Draymond Jones in that sentence because I think he's our he's one of our top five or six paid players. Um, and he's, I think he's our top paid player on the defense outside of – he might be our top paid. It might have been him or Jamal. Um, so I'd love to see him make some big plays, make some big moments, but – it, hopefully he's getting there. I know he's been banged up. Um, Jamal Adams will be back after his unlucky concussion. And he looked good. I know it was for like five plays, but he looked great against the Giants. He was literally like Earl Thomas-esque everywhere, flying over people, like hitting people hard. It was phenomenal to see. All these things are great. And then you get to the offense. Geno Smith's been great. You have DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Zach Charbonnet, and Kenneth Walker are both I tweeted this out the other day. Zach Charbonnet and Kenneth Walker are both in the top 10 in PFF grades for running backs. I'll try to put it up on the screen if I find the clip or the the snippet of it that I I posted. Both top 10. I think the only other team is the Dolphins that had that. Uh, They have two in the top four, which is pretty impressive, but we know what the Dolphins' offense is. Uh, But two in the top 10 in PFF grades, and that's because I think Charbonnet's pass blocking it's a phenomenal number. I think it was like in the top three or four in the in NFL. So this offense has all the pieces, as we know. They're shaping up the right way, as we know, always. Um, and it's going to be a great game to find out how good we really are. Does the offense play to their standard? Does somebody else make a big play this week? Does a Jackson Smith and Jigba show up? Um you know, he's been getting targets, but he has just not been playing great football. He's not been making plays. Gino's been not getting him the ball in the right spot. I'm not pinning it on any person. That's why I mentioned them both. That's just how football works sometimes. Sometimes it's the receiver. Sometimes it's the quarterback. Sometimes it's both. I want to see a couple breakout plays by somebody this week that we don't usually see it by. Whether it's a big game by Jamal Adams. Whether it's a big game by Jackson Smith and Jigbo. Or by Zach Charbonnet. Or Jake Bobo. Or, you know... 
whoever, Will Disley, somebody new outside of DK, Kenneth Walker, and Tyler, and of course Gino because he's throwing the ball. I want to see somebody new make a big play. Um, but I expect let's, we're going to lean heavy on Kenneth Walker because he's been unreal and I think it's been underappreciated how good he is. We're going to lean heavy on this defense having to make some plays because you are on the road in Cincinnati. That's never an easy game in East Coast or Midwest, whatever you call Ohio. East Coast, Midwest game, traveling. Um, I know it was a bye week, but after a bye week, you know, like I, good coaches, yes, they can get their teams prepared. But you're also, you just spent a week, you know, finally with family, spending time away from football for a week. It could change things as well. But I'm just hoping that whatever the Seahawks do, they make a statement this game. The Lions win was a statement, and we need another statement win. Now, if they lose on a game, you know, a field goal in the last minute, I might still say it was a good good statement that this team is in the right direction, but I want to see a win in Cincinnati. And, you know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, that they lock up Jamar Chase because it'd be funny after all the back and forth, but he's a great football player. They're a great football team that's starting to trend in the right direction, but so are we. So let's see what happens. I'm predicting a Seahawks win, a very slight win though, you know, by three, let's say 31 by four, 31, 27. But I'm nervous, not going to lie. But at the end of the day, let's make a statement, Seahawks. It's time for a statement win. But I believe in this team. So let's do it. I believe in Pete Carroll. I believe in Gino. I believe in this whole team. And I think it's going to happen. So let's go get that win in Cincinnati and uh, let's celebrate. I missed having Seahawks football for a week. Come on. Like, it's weird having a week off. We'll be back soon. Make sure you check out everything. And uh, I love you all for all the support. Always. Peace.